Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name's Soleil and I garden in a zone 6A in mid-Michigan. And we are going to be doing our weekly walkabout and garden tour. I'm hoping that we're going to pick these up weekly now for all of you to be able to start seeing changes in the garden. I will say that it's a little colder and cloudier today than I hoped, but uh, definitely things are ready to spring forward. When I look at the temperatures in the next week, I think everything's just gonna burst wide open. So we'll take a look and uh, we're gonna get started in the potage garden like we normally do, but I'm gonna take you in a little bit different route just for something new. So let's get started. So a couple of things going on in the potage garden right now. We um, did actually come through and I took some Virginia and I divided it both from this line over here as well as from over by the deck on this side. So we still have plenty of Virginia kind of lining the area and looking really pretty, but I had enough where I felt like it was a great time to divide it. And I'm gonna show you what I did with those divisions because I'm really excited about how it turned out. And over here we have some sage, or not sage, sorry. This is actually a little bit of kale. And I put all the seedlings together so that they would stay under this protection while uh, they were growing on. And I actually planted these before the winter hit. So they've made it all the way through the winter. And I'm going to be spreading them out probably this week. So we'll put them uh, throughout this potager garden bed so that they have plenty of space to grow and get big. I do know that we have a new groundhog because I have seen him trying to sun himself on our deck, unfortunately. So I'll definitely have to fight that off this year again. I have been pulling ivy out of this garden bed. So uh, the neighbors do have some ivy that uh, they use as a ground cover on their side of the fence. So every once in a while, I do need to come through and really make sure that it doesn't take over this garden bed. And I think I've got most of it out of there. So that's great. We have some beautiful bulbs that are blooming down here. This is beautiful blue Siberian squill and some double daffodils that are just kind of tipped over right now because we don't have much sunshine. But I have a feeling everything is just going to perk right up soon. So we'll go this direction today because I wanted to show you what I've done with the Virginia and I think they look really great all along this line here so we'll take you and show you those but we'll start with this spirea here which is a beautiful spirea that will bloom white it's almost like a bridal wreath spirea and uh, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous when it starts to bloom but it's definitely leafing out and at the base here we have lungwort which all throughout the garden they are putting buds on so I think we're going to get a really spectacular show with the lungwort very soon. So you can still see that some of the daffodils are just kind of leaning over. They're not real happy because the weather hasn't been great but I really do like the way that these Virginia turned out and I'll give you a back look at them as well because they just kind of make a nice lining uh, along the edge here and hopefully we'll get a few blooms off of them. We're getting some leaf buds on this viburnum right here, which is a snowball viburnum and is gonna look very, very beautiful when it blooms this year because it's definitely put on a lot of growth. And here is a lemoncello barberry, which its new growth is very, very bright red. Almost looks like the orange rocket barberry. So doesn't this just look really nice looking back? I really like this addition of the Virginia to this garden bed because it really provides a little bit more evergreen as well. So everything won't just go flat in the winter. And then you'll see we have a giant pile of mulch in the distance there. We did get the arrival of eight yards of mulch today. So I'm looking forward to spreading that around. And we're still enjoying the beauty of these hellebores, which have plenty of buds yet to open. So you'll see we still have lots of buds that are not fully open. So we haven't even gotten the full effect of, you know, what they really truly can do in this area. And I can only imagine if 
some of the blooms had been able to hold on through some of the storms. Take a close look at this Paris and pink bloom here. Very windy out today. Now I also have quite a few babies that are scattered throughout this garden bed. And what I'd like to do is pull some of those out and take them to the back hill and transplant those this year. I think that will be a wonderful addition. And what I am hoping to replace them with is a couple of clearance ones that I got from Lowe's recently. You'll see right here and right here. These are both hellebores and uh, they are the Molly's white hellebore. So these should bloom white and they have beautiful white mottled foliage. So um, I would like to plant those probably in this front bed. I might actually plant them in the back. I don't know. I haven't completely decided yet, but definitely going to take some of the seedling hellebores and plant them in the way back. And also when I stopped at Lowe's, I did pick up some beautiful pansies and violas. So I'm thrilled about having some pretty flowers with some color to look at. Now let's take a look at the sunbed out here because the weeping cherry is definitely starting to do its thing and put out some gorgeous blooms. And the barberry are really getting quite showy as well. The color is just magnificent. And we're getting daffodils. And we can see that the ajuga that's in here, which is the black scallop ajuga has some little buds. So those will be putting out some flowers. I'm seeing some of the alliums come up. Some of my favorite alliums with the beautiful foliage. These are the Allium carativiense. Again, I'm never sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but these have beautiful light pink blooms on them. And we have quite a few of them now in this garden that I'm looking forward to seeing this year. Hopefully nothing will eat them. I was shocked to see the bunny rabbits coming through my garden and eating my alliums. You would think they'd be a little too spicy for them, but not so much. You can also see that the tips have been eaten off of these alliums as well, probably by deer, maybe by the groundhog. I don't know if it comes all the way out here, but I definitely need to get my deer spray out. Isn't this looking gorgeous? So they're just starting to open right now. And I think they're gonna make it because it got quite cold last night and the fact that they are still on the tree. I mean, I saw a few of them kind of dropping today, but there's enough of them that are still in buds that I think we're gonna be able to have a little bit more than like a two day show. So that just really makes me happy. I was worried they were all just gonna get completely frozen off. And we have this Wabi Sabi Viburnum down here, which hasn't bloomed for me uh, yet. And I see little buds. So I'm really excited about that. This will be the first year that it's blooming. So if you are growing viburnum or any type of shrub that you planted and it doesn't bloom the first year or even the first two years, just be patient. Sometimes they just need to really adjust to their environment and develop some really nice roots so that they can actually put out those flowers for you because it does take a lot of energy for the plant to begin to produce those. We have lots of daffodils that are coming up. These are the ice folly kind here. And I've pulled some of them in for bouquets after they have tipped over because of the snow. And those were nice to bring a little bit of color inside. But still definitely waiting on the major pop to happen, which will probably, like I said, because of the warm weather happen in the next few days. So the front mailbox garden bed over here, which is rather small, is looking quite pretty right now. Um, there are quite a few weeds in the little rock river down here, but I have to say that the Siberian squill 
all of the blue next to the ice follies daffodils is just pretty and I did lay this clematis down horizontally so that hopefully we'll get some growth on that going up both of these trellises this year as opposed to just one I think that's going to be lovely but you can just see how the scylla has seeded itself and spread around this garden bed which is just a beautiful blue color now along this garden bed we have mostly yellow daffodils and we're starting to get some beautiful foliage on our black lace elderberry here we also are getting some pretty new foliage on this tiny spirea which I think this one's called Sunjoy, and it is very small and lime green, but all of the foliage starts this almost orangey red color, which is so pretty. And another spirea down here is also really showy with its red foliage, which it does not stay that color, but this is the brand new spring growth and any new growth also puts that on so one of the double place by Rhea series really pretty we have some leaves coming on our louisa crab apple no blooms on that yet but i expect them to come the same with this crab apple here it's also starting to leaf out but no blooms yet which is good because that means we're going to get to see them they aren't going to be completely frozen off. I'm starting to see some new growth on this false cypress back here but it does have a little bit of a spike growth on top of it that I'm just going to trim back to help it um, try to keep it more full. So I'm going to do a little trimming on that bush just to keep it a little bit small and try to get it to fill out more and be a little more dense. I just planted it last year and so uh, in that dry area where it's planted it can be kind of difficult for um, that first year. Everything's looking good in this garden bed over here. I'm really glad we got it cleaned up and our azaleas are budding up. We have one here and the one over here and then some of our Ice rosemary, bog ice rosemary down here is looking pretty. I did probably lose this one. I've got a couple of very small parts that look like they're alive. So we'll see if it manages to come through or not this year, but it's not looking that great. This is going to be a snowball viburnum as well, Eastern snowball viburnum. And I uh, can't wait to see that one bloom this year. We got some blooms on it last year and I'm anticipating more this year because we have more branching on it. And after that one blooms, I will definitely give that one a good trim because I want to keep it nice and bushy and I don't want it to grow, you know, super tall. It can get to 12 feet easy. So I want to do some really judicious pruning on it and be pretty aggressive about it uh, pretty much every year. All right, let's head into the back. So I'm going to take you into the Wayback Garden, kind of that rustic garden area where we have um, some wonderful plants that you couldn't see much of last time. But uh, this week there's definitely some daffodils and things going on that I want to show you. So here we have a big leaf hydrangea and this one is starting to put on some new growth down by the base. The dutzias are also starting to leaf out. That's these small shrubs that are kind of filling in beneath this hydrangea and the Japanese maple. And uh, you can definitely see that these false mite head cypresses are doing really, really well this year. They look so much healthier than they did when I first planted them. They were actually freebies off Facebook Marketplace. It's a wonderful place to get, get things for your garden. Gotten pots there and plants there. But when I picked them up, they were fairly thin and they needed some pruning and to have the grass weeded out from them. And now they're just looking nice and thick. 
eventually because they do get so big I'm thinking I might just go with one in this area and move one of them to another spot where I need some evergreen interest so I'm kind of thinking about that this season what I might do with that now over in our arborvita topiary garden over here we are seeing some tulips coming up and we have some hyacinths that are just starting to bloom pink and white and I can't wait to be able to you know enjoy the scent of those because they always smell so good our uh, primrose alley over here is just starting to put buds on so I can see some beautiful buds on this one and some beautiful buds here and yeah so I I do expect that we're going to get a whole bunch of blooms soon it's pretty exciting spring is one of those times of years where you come out into the garden and you look for even the tiniest change as a hint of hope that the flowers or the next part of the season is coming so over here we have another viburnum and this viburnum has buds all over it so i think we're going to get another really good show on this one and then i'm going to have to do some trimming on that as well for some of the branches that are um, starting to touch the fence back there just to make sure that um, they're not knocking into it and then we have these lemoncello barberries right here that are looking gorgeous already. They are really quite leafed out. And this garden bed faces to uh, the west. So it gets southern and western sun. So usually the warmer part of the day is what this part of the garden gets. And we have this Toscano barberry over here, which has a lighter, almost peachy tone to it. A little bit of those sunset colors, which is beautiful. And lots of chives along the edge here. They're doing really well. And I'm seeing on all of my roses, nice new little sprigs of growth. This one is one I planted just last year, Snowdrift. So I'm hoping that one gives off a little bit more show this year. Well, you can start to see some color now you'll see that my swing is down back there because the winds were so bad uh, and gusty that it kept knocking it over so i just had to take the swing off of the pedestal and i'm gonna have to find a way to kind of secure that a little bit better so before we head through this woodland garden let's go real quick into the back garden So we'll kind of head over here and then we'll loop back around and come up the stairs because that's a really pretty thing to look at as well. We have some small tete -a -tete daffodils that are blooming back here and lots of them that are coming up along the edge of the fence. So I planted those before the fence was installed and luckily they don't look like they were damaged. So I think we're gonna get quite a few of those um, coming up soon and then we have this beautiful view of the hellebores and the boxwoods along here and more daffodils and brunnera so we have jack frost brunnera along the edge here that are just starting to come up and over here we have some gorgeous lungwort we have like the Diana Claire lungwort, which is a more silvery lungwort, and some hellebores. And again, I think we're going to have so many beautiful flowers here coming soon. Here's another Diane Claire lungwort. This one actually has some buds on it. And you can see that we're starting to get some color with the vinca along here with the beautiful blue purple flowers. And planted amongst the vinca are other plants that are going to start showing a little bit more. Like we have this lungwort here. 
I do have to pull this. This looks like some invasive garlic mustard, which is not good. Keep an eye out for that stuff. And we have some nice new growth coming on the baby hellebores that we planted last year, which are all along here. So I think next year, I'm hoping that many of these will be mature enough so that we'll actually start to get some beautiful growth on them because when you look up hills at hellebores, they're really gorgeous. I mean, just look at the ones that we have right up there. I just think that's really, really pretty. We do have some Brunera here as well. And lots of little violets are popping up now. We have white and purple violets that spread themselves around the garden and I love to see them back here. I think it's a great place for them. If they take over other spots of your garden, sometimes they're not so much fun, but back here I just love them because they're very beautiful and natural. Another really nice example of a baby hellebore getting bigger and some foxgloves. And then we have some lungwort back here and more brunera. We have three brunera right in this area, which are just starting to show. And then as we walk back to the stairs, we have a large swath of the large root geraniums along the edge of the stair. But then you can see on this little hillside here that we have some gorgeous little violets. And some of the daffodils are starting to come up. And so we're getting really pretty colors. Again, more baby hellebores that I harvested from the front garden bed seedlings. Brought them back here and now the results are starting to pay off. So I'm so excited. It's really fun to see when you're able to utilize your own plants to create more garden space. There's some beautiful junipers down here at the base, but then you can see that the tiny tete-a-tete -tete daffodils really look pretty along the edges of this rustic garden path made out of old concrete blocks. Just kind of dug into the hillside. All right, well now let's check out the woodland garden because it's starting to have a little bit of excitement too. I think you can tell from last time there's a lot more green. Daffodils have gotten much higher, but they haven't opened a significant amount more. We're still seeing some beautiful blooms on our Pieris along this fence line. I have quite a few, peer, uh, not peers, um, Scylla that are kind of around and about in the garden that I'm hoping will eventually self-seed and naturalize. So just planted little sprigs of them here and there. Um, that's just kind of a, a small seed to plant for a long-term plan. We have a very, very vigorous Queen of Hearts burner right here. That one probably could be divided again. I divided that one last year, but uh, it's so beautiful. The leaves are so big. Now I did come through and I did some fertilizing. People always ask if I fertilize. I use some of the oh, plant tone or garden tone or holly tone, whatever I have on hand right about this time of year before I do mulching. And that way it's also raining and it's a great time before all of the real growth starts happening for it to begin to break down. Now in this garden bed we have the polemonium. This one's so pretty. This one will have some really beautiful blue flowers on it. And again you can see just some 
scattered syllabulbs in here to see how they can naturalize a bit over time. And then at the end of this bed, I planted these um, snowdrops this last year. So we have three groupings of those and they're just starting to bloom. And you can see the Dana's Dolchette is starting to open more. This is a beautiful hellebore with a very nice upright habit, part of the Frost Kiss series. And next to it over here, we have a red. I think this one might be Anna's red. I'm not positive. I think I read the tag for you guys last time and it wasn't. <laughs> it's also part of the Frost Kiss series though, I know that much. We're getting some beautiful little blooms here, still on the raspberry splash pulmonaria. Last year, uh, these blooms were a bit taller and the daffodils were blooming at the same time. So it's definitely a very different sequence in terms of what can tolerate this real cold spring and wet spring that we're having so far. But these are gorgeous pulmonary. I highly recommend them to anyone. And you know, down a little ways from those as well, we have the pink -a blue And that one's really already started to push out a lot of foliage along with the blooms that it has, which are a little bit bigger blooms. And this is where I put a couple other Virginia just to kind of line the path here, which I think looks really pretty along the stones. There's something to me about, um, this is going to sound funny, but about lettuce and kale um, and leafy vegetables like that, that I think are so gorgeous. But things are looking really good. I did come through and put some soil acidifier around my rhododendrons because they were looking a little bit chlorotic, um, where you can see the veins in them, and they're already starting to look a little bit better. That was just a couple of days ago, so. And take a look at this beautiful hellebore. Now this one I got from Home Depot, which had no tag. And then I looked it up online and it looked like this one was like Glenda's Gloss. It looked a lot like that. Anyways, it's beautiful. I love the colors on it and the way that the pink kind of outlines the back of the flower. Just so beautiful. And then over here, these hellebores just keep going and going. I mean, they have been great. And they're such a pretty color. We're starting to get some blooms on this variety, which I believe is Trevi Fountain, or it could also be something else. This was one that I was just got out of a neighbor's yard. And this is the Moon Dance, part of the Frost Kiss series also, just starting to open up. A little bit lighter of a color, limey green with a little bit of a corally pink edging around it. The clematis around the yard are also starting to put out their growth. So you can really see on the vines, some of those new leaves. Penny's pink hellebores are taking their time at opening up. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing those. But the lungwort that are along this border edge are just about getting ready to open. So next week on our tour, I'm sure that we will get to enjoy some blooms from those. I have no doubt. Now this one definitely is an Anna's Red Hellebore and it's really pretty, but it hasn't even fully opened yet either. But it's quite the contrast in this garden bed with some of the other bright colored flowers. You can see the glowing foliage on this nine bark starting to push out.
And over here in the Half Moon Garden, some things that are really starting to push are the Tian Shen Seven Sunflowers. You can see the growth of the leaves on those just pushing quite fast. And we have a lot of hyacinths that are coming up in here. I believe these are the Delft Blue color. Isn't it incredible the shades that they can come up with? And some pretty daffodils in here starting to bloom as well. So yeah, I think the garden overall is starting to perk up a little bit. It's definitely been a difficult spring with the false starts and the heavy snow and all of the rain that we've gotten in wind, but we're getting there. I mean, even the thundercloud plum tree right over here is starting to leaf out and I think we're going to get some blooms on that soon. And probably our red buds will start to push their blooms soon as well. Thank you so much for joining me for this walkabout and garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next time.